entire uh, world. And he, it's, it's a pleasure to have him here. He's in town, actually, joining us by Zoom from MTSU, where he will be speaking tonight at the Student Union Ballroom there. Free and open to the public starts at 6.30. But it's a pleasure to have you on this, uh, this morning, Dr. Lee. I remember watching you back when I lived in Los Angeles during the O.J. Simpson trial. And uh, it, yeah. is a, it is a pleasure to finally get to talk to you. Um, we're going to touch on a lot of things this morning, but specifically on this rape kit issue in the background or the backlog and what he thinks can be a solution. But we've got a phone call for you. We'll take that real first. Uh, any question from our viewers that may have for the doctor, we'll take them now and we'll go to uh, Ann. Ann, good morning. Hi, Ann. Good morning. Um, first off, Nick, I saw you last night on Court TV and it was a pleasure to see you. Um, with the New Politan, so it was a pleasure. Thank you. Um, Dr. Lee, it is a pleasure to see you. I have followed you and Dr. Bass um, since the 90s, and mm -hmm. it is a pleasure to have you on Open uh, Morning Line. Um, my daughter went to UT to study under Dr. Bass, and it was her second year that she went to the body farm and quickly changed majors. So my question <laughs> is, do they take students the first year to the body farm so that they can determine they do not like blood and guts? <laughs> before they waste a year of studying. <laughs> um, but my question on the rape kits is, as the mother of a victim, they often do not want to go through the mm -hmm. torture of the... I don't know how to express it. They often are very, very victimized in the process of going through of, of collecting what the they evidence. Have got, yeah. yeah, they have to do the swabs and, and that's invasive yeah. and very, uh, and, yeah, yeah, can be traumatic. So what has been done to make that process okay. easier and those kids sit forever and ever and families are not allowed to provide the funding. Okay, hang tight on that, Anne, because, Doctor, she's bringing us right into what the main topic is today, and she's talking about the backlog of these rape kits. Maybe you can answer her question there initially. It, it can be traumatic for these women after they've already been sexually assaulted to go through the rape kit collection. They go through all of this, it's difficult, and then the rape kit just sits there. Yes. Uh, Nick, um, Anne's question is wonderful. Uh, there are probably in this country uh, about one million sexual assault rape cases happening in this country every year. Wow. That's a lot of victims. Yep. Over my years of uh, service, I investigate thousands, thousands of rape cases. I also have a chance to talk to some uh, rape victims. And uh, this psychological effect hurting the victim uh, so they're so traumatized therefore the investigator when you investigate the case have to have compassion understanding meanwhile the forensic scientists we examine the evidence we should quickly turn around in other words not a lot of time because by law the rape kit can wait for two months six months sometimes years before we get to especially no suspect case mm -hmm. many of those rape cases victim recognize the suspect usually have a priority assigned to that case to compare sure extract the semen out compare the dna blood typing early days isoenza and they have no suspect. They're usually just waiting mm -hmm. online. Well, by the way, when, when, you say, uh, when you say no suspect, doctor, excuse me on that, just what you mean is that they can do the rape test and if they run a DNA, they'll get a DNA profile. They just don't have that anyone to match up against. Is that correct? Uh, yes or no. <laughs> no suspect lets them pick them out of conscious or suspect wear a mask yes. or 
certain situation, victim cannot give a good description of the suspect. Sure. So the investigator no place to go. Before the DNA, basically those cases just sit in the asset backlog. Today, with uh, DNA data bank, now you can, even no suspect, you can search those cases against the state and uh, federal CODIS data bank. Because sex offender, before they release, the early release, they have to agree, put their DNA into the national data bank. So now a lot of the cases were solved by checking the database. That's what I say before artificial intelligence and big database. For example, firearm, we have nine now. Fingerprint, have an FS, uh, automatic system you can search and matching. Once you identify, mm-hmm. the individual identify, if this individual convicted, uh, incarcerated, then you prevent future tragedy. A delay of DNA database search that, of course, they can commit the crime again and again. And more victim traumatized and uh, the society all because this delay feel insecure, feel hurting. Just practically speaking, can you tell me, doctor, if you have a rape kit and I were to come to you and say, here you are, Dr. Lee, I want this tested. How, if you would need it, and you could do it right then and there, how long does it take to get a DNA profile from a rape kit? I mean, can you get it done in a couple of hours and how much does it cost? Oh, it's uh, more than a couple of hours. It's not in the movie. Oh, yeah, like, how long uh, does it really take? Okay, uh, probably a good three to four days. Okay. Because we are have first have seen have to extract the DNA out of the swamp. Yep. Then we have to quantitative determine the DNA and the quality or quantity of those DNA. Then we have to look at that, try to isolate the DNA, the spur DNA maybe mixed with vagina DNA, uh, then we're going to analyze that. Analyze because the quantity of DNA, maybe you have to do uh, more cycle to multiply the amount of DNA. Then we can have a reasonable uh, uh, reading. Now you have a DNA profile. Yeah. That DNA profile, then we'll have to put in the CODIS, because the CODIS is a national DNA data bank. Only certain uh, certain requirement, you have to meet those requirements to put into the CODIS to do the search. Once you search that, then uh, you get the response from the CODIS uh, authority, say this is a match or not match, then uh, you can compare them notify the investigator. So it's a lot of scientific work and paperwork and computer work. That's okay. I'm glad you laid that out. That's the first time anyone's ever really explained it to me. I've always wondered what takes so darn long sometimes to get it done. And and that explains why sometimes maybe it, it, we have the backlog. And we'll talk more on that. We have to take a break, doctor. We'll, we'll take a break. We'll be back and sure. more of our conversation with Dr. Henry Lee. And we'll get in more to the backlog of these rape kits and the problem with that here in Tennessee um, coming up right after this.